After all those weeks of rain and cloudy skies, many of us have a craving for sunlight. But making up for lost rays can also be hazardous for your health, whether you're at a park or a tanning salon. That's also the reason behind the city's first sun safety station, recently installed at Millennium Park in West Roxbury. To tell us about sun safety efforts outdoors and in the workplace is the executive director of Impact Melanoma, Deb Gerard, uh, thank you for being with us, Deb. Thanks, Chris. I'm happy to be here. We'll start with melanoma. It's a form of cancer. The sun has been around forever, Ever. practically. But what's going on with melanoma? Well, if you think back to the 20s and the 30s, um, that, that was a period of time where people began going to the beach and to beach communities more. Women wore bathing suits uh, as the fashionable thing. Uh, and spent, people began to spend more of their life outside for enjoyment. And uh, believed from, a very, from the very beginning that having a tan was really great. Um, and if you sort of go forward, we've got um, men who have served in the military in desert places outside, not wearing sunscreen, needless to say. Uh, so the amount of ultraviolet radiation that people have gotten exposed to over the years has increased. And then just think about what's happened uh, over the last 20 years or so with the whole issue of tanning beds and young people. Never before have we seen people under the age of 25 with melanoma the way that we see it. We've seen it today and is the reason that many of, of us that are advocates have really worked towards uh, getting bills in place that limit uh, young people under the age of 18 from being in tanning beds. You know, at first you might think this only happens to people who roast for hours on the beach, but, but I mean, how little time can still be dangerous? You know, one of the things that we've seen uh, from the data is that intermittent tanning is very dangerous because sort of think about it's February, you're going to um, a warm climate vacation and so you say I'm going to go to the tanning bed so that I so that I can have a base tan or it's prom season I'm going to go out and get a tan so I'll look better in my dress and and you think of the amount of time that you really um, think more about being outside tanning it's become a new verb right and um, but the really important thing is the burn and it's the burn that is really the beginning of what's the most dangerous. And what we're trying to do at Impact is get, get people to understand that banning the burn would be a really smart thing uh, and, and look at the ways that you might do that. Well, I guess it can happen to people not just on the beach, but, you know, it could Anywhere. be whether it's walking or working in a garden or playing golf. Uh, or being a construction worker. We're, we just started a program in, with some construction companies in Boston where we go out and we uh, talk with outdoor workers about how they protect themselves. And we talk with the unions and we talk with the employers about are there things that you can do for your employees who are outdoors all day long? Well, you've recently uh, put a station in Millennium Park in West Roxbury. Uh, it right. used to be a landfill. Not as many trees as you would <laughs> like out there. Not as many trees as we would like. How's that working? Um, we've only been out there for two weeks, um, and but we're very excited. This is a, a project that we are doing uh, through a sponsorship with our Bellet Insurance. They are wonderful supporters uh, of this kind of work uh, and have supported sunscreen dispensers in other places around the city as well. But the sun safety station, we sort of think as a beacon to remind people, particularly where there are lots of people and there are a lot of soccer players at Millennium Park, to um, stop and go put some sunscreen on. If, our goal is not to provide sunscreen for the entire, if, all of humanity, but if you think about it and you go out and you put it on in the morning and you say, oh, I'm, I'm out longer than I thought I'd be, I want to put some sunscreen on, it's there. And that's what we're really trying to do, is for people who really don't have sunscreen, can't afford sunscreen, that it's there. And if you have it and you forget it, it's there as well. Um, and the reminders are there. It's big and yellow. And this particular one at Millennium has a, is a tower. So uh, four sunscreen stations and a big umbrella, and it reminds you that it's time to put your sunscreen on. This is BNN News, and we're talking with Deb Gerard from Impact Melanoma. Uh, Deb, what about sunscreen? We've heard some news recently that maybe that might be harmful too. Oh, sunscreen, sunscreen. Um, 
You know, these kinds of uh, theories have been around for a long time, and really what needs to happen is that the FDA needs to do their work and um, do safety testing, and they're doing that. But right now, um, as of a couple of weeks ago, some new guidelines came out, and they said, you know, the majority of sunscreens out in the commercial market are chemically-based sunscreens. They are made to block UVA and UVB uh, rays that are burning and aging rays. And uh, one of the things that we know is that, of course, they absorb into the skin. These, um, and so they are looking at uh, several ingredients, some that are European-based, that have not been tested in this country at all, but are being used in Europe. And then some in this country, particularly the avabenzones and the oxybenzones, that um, there are, there, there's a lot of conversation going on about what this means. What the FDA is saying is that, yes, they absorb into the skin. They might absorb more than we had originally anticipated, but we need more study because we don't know what that means. But what we do know is that when you don't practice sun protection, your, the, the potential of getting skin cancer and far more dangerous melanoma is very high. You just mentioned uh, two different kinds of ultraviolet rays, the A and the B. Mm -hmm. uh, do all sunscreens block both of those, or do people have to read the fine print to make sure? Well, I would have said a few years ago, make sure you read the fine print, and I still would. But for the majority of sunscreens that we see in the market, um, they say the words broad spectrum. And once you know, have that, then you know that you're guarded against both UVA and UVB. I do have to ask you, what happens if somebody has melanoma? And, well, maybe they don't know it yet, but they have to look for something to, to know if, if it should be checked. What would you advise? I would advise that if you have something on your skin that is either new, a new lesion or mole, or that something's changed about it, it's bleeding, it's itchy, it just looks different, then um, that's really a great time to talk to your doctor, either your primary care when you're going in to meet with them about something, or a dermatologist so that you can get it checked. We should finally mention uh, if people would like to get some more information about preventing uh, this harmful thing here, what's the best way to find that? They can go on our website at impactmelanoma.org. Hi. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you so much, Chris. Deb Gerard from impactmelanoma.org. We'll have more news in just a moment.